Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. In this video I will be covering the Fender Stain Model 2CE and the, the first model, uh, Model 1CI. And uh, yes, if you're looking for a, um, a very special low budget speaker or speakers, I have two speakers for you here. These, these are two speakers that uh, don't really need any introduction. They've, they've been in the game for many, many years. And they've gotten a lot better with, with time. I still have the 1CI, Fender Stain 1CI. And I have to say that um, it's probably the best low-budget speaker I have ever heard in my life. And that's saying quite a lot because I've heard many, many speakers. Probably a couple of thousand speakers. Um, the thing that's so nice about Fandestine, let me just show you again, first model and second model. The thing I really like about Fandestine with these two models, I haven't really heard the other models, haven't had the, the opportunity for that, but I really like the fact that it's so real, human-like and retro. When I think of Fandestine, I'm, I'm, I'm easily bought, brought back in time to when I heard my first uh, good stereo system and it was a sweet Macintosh amplifier like 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, it, it's just, it just brings back, you know, good times, good feelings, stuff like that. It's not uh, screechy, it's not uh, flat and, and modern like a lot of speakers. I mean, they they have this like human quality and the fact that they don't have the cabinet design is just a really special type of acoustic, you know. It, it sounds so free and big in sound. And um, this is actually my, my favorite model, the uh, the smaller 1CI. I know that most people have this as their favorite model. And, and trust me, it's a lot more dynamic and um, and powerful. But I think that the 1CI actually is a tiny bit more intimate, focused, and and where you really can like really enjoy the music. Where I think that it's a bit more of a party animal kind of speaker, this 2CI, uh, 2CE <laughs> um, model. I can't remember if it's the Signature 2 or 3 that I heard. Um... I think it's the signature two, but so the the signature three is probably even better. But just 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 an awesome speaker. I mean, I, I really don't get how they can make a speaker for this price. Just absolutely ridiculous. The bass response in the one CI is forty five out of a hundred. What is possible? That is just insane for this price point. You know, it it says around this price here. I mean, this speaker should be at least five to six thousand dollars, at least uh, more like ten thousand dollars, the type of sound that this thing gives. I've heard a lot of speakers that were ten to fifteen thousand dollars that couldn't even get up to this level, this level of true realism and instruments and naturality just an absolutely <clears throat> beautiful spe uh, sound, uh, not a beautiful speaker, but um, just just absolutely amazing. And uh, I've I've actually heard through the years a lot of B and W daily speakers, um, audio vector, doing audio, and a lot of the usual stuff that that you listen to. And these were speakers in the five to twenty thousand dollar category and trust me i would rather have this cheaper speaker than one of those um speakers that they made for like 10 or 20 years ago you know so i think those companies that i just mentioned they haven't they have got gotten a lot better the recent years so i would probably not say that for the for the current models that they have but um, I've heard a lot of B&W speakers, you know, big, big speakers having three, four, five units in them. 
gigantic speak is weighing a hell of a lot. And they would probably be in the 15 to 30 thousand dollar category and and they actually sounded quite boring and and trafficable in in in, in sound and and just a lot of hi-fi and and this thing is just a hell of a lot more fun so as as you can see bass treble really good for the price mid-range yeah good dynamics yeah very dynamic and free and um you could actually wish for a bass that has the you know the the last reaction and then and where it goes completely down and that's what you basically only get when you have a a a, a cabinet actually what this speaker reminds me of the one ci and, and the two ce this the type of sound that you get from it now that i think about it is actually a lot like open baffle i didn't think about that before i <laughs> just remember that but it actually reminds me of open baffle speakers that you get at around 10 to 20 thousand dollars usually so, so that's that's pretty good I, they, they might have a bit more slam those speakers because they're actually pretty big those speakers uh, open baffle speakers but but hey you know uh, when a speaker like this can can keep up with uh, you know normal speakers that are in the 10 to 20 thousand dollar range of open baffle speakers i mean just crazy 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 now let's get into some of the, the the worst stuff i mean pure detail and black levels you know of course you have to pay a hell of a lot more money to get those things those things cost a lot and especially clarity intensity and, and resolution um those are kind of like the key points to why you would pay for a, a karma speaker or a verity speaker or martin design speaker though or peak consult speakers i mean those are ridiculously expensive speakers and they do those things almost at, at, at the highest highest level so um so you're not gonna really get that but you're basically getting a very sweet warm retro compatible sound and um so you can basically throw anything on uh, these two fantasy speakers. And notice the fact that the 2CE signature basically beats almost everything with 1CI. Um, but it's basically uh, the bass that, that dominates and, and the uh, dynamics. That That's the big uh, difference. And especially if you listen to... Um, what's it called acdc thunderstruck they really uh, feel like the, the two ce were just made for that type of music where the one ci there you feel it still sounds good but it, it's held a bit back and it's lean leaning towards a bit more of an intimate small room uh, type of thing you know um so so yeah very very, very interesting and uh, I have a lot, a lot of things to say about this speaker. It's a fantastic speaker. It brings you back in time, just like I said before. It's very liberating and free and warm. It has that live, raw music. Um, so it, it is like being at a concert um, and giving you that human-like experience. And it, they, they easily give you two to five times more performance compared to... Um, the market uh, how the prices are running generally on the market and uh, they're, they're, they're just really good at dis displaying emotions and and release releasing energy i mean they don't have that lowest end bass like if you have a jbl l100 classic kind of bass you know I, I think if you had a thing that that was that was almost better than this i would say i, I could only think of the jbl l100 classic the the new model that would probably beat both of these speakers um i don't really know how it compares price wise but that is basically the only speaker that i can think of that that beats these two so and 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 the and the jbls are a hell of a lot more easy to to drive so it's it's worth taking that into consideration 
and the JBLs can also be a bit further away from the uh, the back wall and, and the side walls especially. So you might want to, if you're considering these, just have a have a have a try at those but that's the new jbls jbls l100 classic not not the not the the original jbl the original jbl i, I would say it isn't quite as good as uh, as these two that's my opinion but you kind of need a, a slightly warm amp for these two to run in the same sound direction um but generally they work with 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 most things on the on the market I, I mean you have to use some pretty analytical bad sounding gear for for them to sound bad so um yeah kind of says uh, everything but i also have to say that if you're used to some really good speakers i mean if you've got money <laughs> And you're probably also not watching this video, but if you've got money and you're, you know, into these fancy apartments, minimalistic apartments, and you've owned some really expensive modern piece of equipment like Verity, Martin Design, and stuff like that, then yeah, that then you would think that this speaker is probably just charming, but very simple mono channel retrograde corny and, and raw in sound but it kind of makes sense comparing prices so i'd i'd suggest you know if you're going for your first speaker stop stop looking at those um those, those bookshelf speakers i mean uh, so many of them that, that are horrible at, at these prices um generally I, I would say bookshelf speakers don't sound good unless you get into the at least the five to fifteen thousand uh, dollar category and for those prices you might as well take a a big floor standing speaker and, and get the full experience that, that that that's what i think but there are obviously people out there that don't agree with that but i've, I've tried a lot of bookshelf speakers and they're just they're so limited you know especially with the bass response and um yeah just yba sound and emotiva those are really good paired uh, speaker uh not speaker what do you call it amplifier brands that work just fantastic with fantasting especially yba passion and above um those are really good um pairings with fantasting and oddly enough i'm not a big macintosh fan Oddly enough, when I hear almost any Macintosh equipment on a Fenderstein speaker, I'm really surprised <laughs> how how well the the, the Fenderstein clicks with, with the Macintosh sound because it kind of takes the focus away from the from the grayish conservative sound that Macintosh has, and it almost feels as if it's made for each other those those two pieces of, of gear so yeah just try and look into that if that's at all possible because they just sound like they were made for each other macintosh on on Fantastine speakers um but but yeah you have to kind of know that oh yeah the price point i've actually seen some few times people selling the 1CI, not the old 1C version, but the 1CI for only $250 to $500 used in the US. That's just insane. You know, in, in Europe where I live, I mean, you'd probably have to pay like, I don't know, like $1,000 uh, at least, or $1,500 for these used, uh, at least, um so so yeah i kind of envy people in the u.s <laughs> with, with their fantastine uh, prices they're just ridiculously low um we don't really have anything in europe that, that comes close to this performance as far as i know and don't get me wrong i mean there's there's of course audio note they make some pretty good speakers um at the lower and mid end but but personally i'm not so glad 
about the the audio note lower end sound i mean for me if i have to it, it, to me audio note starts being audio note when you get into the the, the higher sounding uh, higher quality speakers so so yeah they, they do have a lot of uh, good stuff going on and charm but um, i feel that the, there's a lot of competition in in the low to to mid end because companies know that Hey, we're not gonna sell a lot of equipment, so you know, so we have to focus on the low to the mid end of gear, and there's a lot of competition there. So I feel that Audio Note they they are doing pretty well in the, in that area, but where Audio Note basically makes the best speakers in the world, in my opinion, is in the high end. Once you go for the A and E, but then then you're also not looking at these prices. Those those are completely different prices. Then then we are actually talking about the best speakers in the world, and um, yeah, just just wanted to let you guys know that that even this Fenderstein company, you know, they, they I I personally feel that you get a lot more value for your money than even Audio Note. And and when I'm saying that as an Audio Note fan, then you just know that yeah, they they they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good, these Fenderstein speakers. Also, um, I want to mention that, I um, don't know if I did that before, but they actually sound a lot better, these 1CI uh, speakers, if you have them in a small room. And when I'm, when I'm saying small room, I mean 15 to 30 square meters. Did I mention that? Yeah. 15 to 30 square meters for the the one ci now what i did uh, wrong with this speaker at a time at first i had it in a in a room that was about 15 16 square meters it sounded awesome even though what one of the side walls were, were going into another room it still sounded awesome but once you get a a room that is um where it's possible to place the speaker almost directly at the um, the back wall and the side walls if you have like a couple of like 5 10 20 centimeters to the walls you you get a sound that is just almost optimal but if you tr start treating this speaker as a normal speaker okay so if, if you start doing these things that they do at hi-fi shows where they pull the speaker out and they're like a couple of meters from the back and the sidewall. They're going to sound horrible. You're not going to recognize that it's a Fender Sting speaker. It's just going to go like, uh, go farting a lot of uh, sound waves. I, I, I did that in my current room. I took it upstairs and put it in my current room, which is almost 50 square meters. And I, um, I pulled them only about a meter away from um, from the back and the side walls and it just sounded horrible and that's even though i had equipment that was so much better compared to back in the days when i had them in my in my small little room downstairs so i mean they the one ci don't also don't like a huge room so once you go past 30 square meters i mean just you can almost wave goodbye to to control and that nice uh, luxury warm sound and good timing because it just can't fill up a room that's really any bigger than 35 square meters it, it, it probably can to some degree but you'll lose a lot of the control so 15 to 30 square meters and about 20 to 40 with the bigger 2ce uh, signature so just telling you guys that you know because I've seen a lot of guys do that, and I just thought, like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I also want to note, um, pay attention to this, that I actually think that the 1CI is a slightly better speaker in regards to focus and intimacy. So if you're a guy that listens to a lot of classical music, um, or intimate music, girly music, or whatever, the 1CI is probably better for you than the 2CE. But if you're 
I would say if you're typically a, a bit younger and you like to listen to a lot of beat driven music and especially if you like rock and uh, what can I say heavy metal no um, jazz and, and, and stuff like that that has a lot of beats in it and drums um, then then yeah definitely the, 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 the 2CE signature would be a better choice for, for that it has a hell of a lot more responsive bass and just feel that it goes a lot more down and uh, it's it's a lot more of a party animal kind of speaker so uh, it makes it more it, it it can seem more fun and entertaining that the than the one ci model so negative points like i said positioning of the speakers um and and try and stay uh, within four to seven meters from the speaker to the wall behind you as soon as the wall behind you uh, goes past uh, around seven meters you lose a, a lot of detail and uh, i wouldn't suggest doing that and uh, this is of course a negative two ce signatures are very hard to drive um, so that's also one of the reasons why i do not in general, uh, recommend 2CE for a lot of people because, um, yeah, they, they, you need quite a powerful amplifier for that. And not, not all people have that. So beware of that. Terminals are pretty crap because uh, there just isn't a lot of room to put spades on them. So you have to kind of bend plastic around the, the, the terminals t to get some pretty good fitting terminals on and the only ones that i could find that were good quality were the oy8 gyt which are gold terminals uh, those are the one actually one of the best terminals on the market so if you're looking for some good terminals that that really match the sound of the uh, the, the fender stain oy8 gyt really good but listen to this oy8 spy uh, T, um, they sound horrible on on, on these Fender uh, speakers, and I don't know if it's the, the the terminals themselves, but the silver version that that Oyed makes sound on this speaker not very good. And I would generally suggest that you don't use rhodium spade terminals on uh, fender stain it just doesn't fully click i would suggest copper or gold that is the compatible type of sound usually there are exceptions to the rule so you are of course uh, free to do whatever you you want to do but it you know in order to click you know make, make the gear really click um i would suggest going with something like oh eight gyt but you can also just be one of those kind of people who who just um um just uses bare wire you know it, it can actually sound pretty good on these speakers and of course we've got the adjustment um capabilities of the the speakers um i think behind here i don't know if it's on the picture uh, um I think I've seen it on a picture before, but they've, they've got some, some interesting things on the back where you can regulate the treble and, and the bass response. Uh, apparently they don't really cover it here, but okay. Um, you've got a knob for that, and that's one of the reasons why I said uh, features uh, 65 quite a bit more than normal. So um, yeah, also worth mentioning is that get the floor, uh, what, what's it called? Get the floor stands with the speakers. If you don't have the floor stands, you basically don't have the Fenderstein sound. They sound very muted and boring, um, and not quite uh, tuned in when you don't have these uh, stands. So uh, get those at all costs. Um, that basically will, will cover everything in this uh, review. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and and yeah, it's it. This is like the one speaker that I would recommend. For basically people starting their hi-fi journey this is a very very good 
uh, set of speak the one CI and the two CE signature. Um, I think it's version two and three. So um, yeah, have a nice day. Bye.